What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to LTH. My name is Abe and in this episode it's the second part of our Homer dashboard where we are going to cover how to set up this right here. So this allows us to put our Proxmox stats into our Homer dashboard. We can see the main node overall usage. We can click on specific nodes if we have a cluster or multiple nodes, virtual machines and their percentage of CPU and RAM usage containers if they're on or off our storage and how much of our storage is being used as well as iframes so if oh and do not forget that we do have a website where we have step-by-step -step instructions with links and copyable commands that you can use to follow along with this video linked in the description if you ever get lost uh, the documentation for this is found on uh Homar's website, which I will be following and linking in that video article or the website article as well. Find and so I thought I would make a video on this. So the first thing you're gonna do is log into your Proxmox machine, uh, have your Homer dashboard opened up for whatever the IP address is of your virtual machine that you use to create your Homer dashboard. And then we're gonna click data center at the top. So if you don't see this permissions folder, if it's collapsed or open, you might be under PVE or under one of your virtual machines. So just make sure that you have your data center clicked at the top. So the first things we're gonna do is go to the groups section and we're gonna click that create button at the top and name this group whatever. And so I'm gonna do YouTube learn group. Something descriptive that's gonna make sense that'll know what we're talking about, right? And then we're gonna click on the permissions folder all the way here at the top. We are gonna click add. We're creating group permissions. We wanna give the permissions everything right from the root folder down and then this YouTube learn group that we just created and then they're going to need the PVE auditor uh, checked or the PVE auditor selected as well as the propagate checked and then after that we are going to need to create a user so now we have a group we've given the group uh, permissions and now we need a user to assign to our group so we're gonna click the add button at the top and then name this to whatever you want, YouTube user. And this user will use the Proxmox VE authentication server method. And now you need to assign them a password, just like that. And now you need to assign them to the group, right? So we've done three things, created a user, created a group, and given the group the permissions, and then the users will inherit the group permissions, okay? Um, and once that is done, none of this stuff needs to be changed. Apparently my passwords did not match and we click add. And then under here, we need to create an API that Homar can use to reach out to this server. So we're gonna click the add button and then we're gonna select the user, YouTube user from the top and then the um, token ID needs to be something informative, like an application or purpose like Homar. So we'll do YouTube Homar, just like that. And then uh, privilege separation should be unchecked. And then we are going to um, expire never, right? Sorry. And then click add and then we will get our security key. Now, real quick, on this page, this is where you're gonna get your token ID. So if you click the link in the description of and go to our website and you read the uh, 13 steps on Homar's website, you will see at the end it says, uh, using the user token ID, create the username in the format user at PV exclamation token ID equals secret. What's well, actually just per put given to you right here, and this is only shown once, so you need to make sure that you copy this. So I'm gonna open my notes, and I'm actually gonna paste that into my notes, and then I'm gonna paste this into my notes, and the only thing that you need to add is a equal sign. So it will be this equals this, right? And that's it. So 
I'm gonna copy that from my Obsidian notes off camera. And the next thing we're gonna to need to do is go over to our dashboard. So if you do not have a Proxmox node created like we showed in the last episode, please do that. But you can always enter edit mode, click add tile, and then click apps, and then do your Proxmox app that way. In our case, I already have it. So I'm gonna just click the gear icon on the top right, click uh, edit. We have the Proxmox name, the internal address, and the external address is the same. So we can access it. And then we are going to go over to the integration uh, section. And then we're going to do this. And we're going to paste that. So just to kind of show you the format here, there's that secret keys equal sign. And then the username, just how they gave it to us. And we're going to click save. So now the integration is attached to this dashboard. Now we need to click add a tile widgets and then this widget works with system health monitoring, which isn't very clear um, in the article. You actually have to click like the next page and it will go over like, oh, this is supported or at the very top or yeah, at the very top, I guess, of the article, it says the Proxmox integration allows you to view performance and resource data uh, with the following widget system health monitoring. So that also took me a little bit to figure out. And then we can see that it just says, Oh, it's unable to find this. So you may need to change some information in here. So just giving you an example of our other one, we can see we have the, uh, tab to open system PVE VMs. So system PVE and then VMs and there's everything is turned on in here. And then uh, you can click all active and then ignore certificate errors and click save. And we're just gonna give this a little bit while, a while for this to propagate, but eventually you will start seeing data in here. It's just not instant. Okay, and there we go. So that actually took like 20, 30 seconds maybe. And now we can see all the information is presented. So that is how you add your information into your dashboard. Now, if we wanna add a website or news articles or other sources of information where you need just a quick peek at the web page, we can go into widgets and iframes right here. So one thing to note with iframes is it doesn't work on all websites because some websites don't support it. Security Week, for example, does support it. And so I can add this in here, allow full screen, allow scrolling. You can, you know, uh, allow payments, allow auto pay through here, allow your microphone to push through, but there's all that. And then we can just stretch this to however we need it. So maybe you're monitoring stuff or you have a live threat feed that you're subscribed to in your dashboard, and then you can add uh, that into your dashboard so your users can interact with it. But that's it for this video. I hope that makes sense. My name is Abe and this is LTH signing out.